Hi, this is Eric Chang. Welcome to Brookfield Amatech. The Brookfield DVNX Viscometer is a 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, which can be used either in external mode with real -Cal T software or in standalone mode. In this video, I will discuss the 21 CFR Part 11 compliance components available in DVNX Viscometer running in standalone mode. In 6 minutes, I will briefly demonstrate how this function such as record retention, pro password protection, and lockout, electronic signature, user assign, login, and access level, archiving, and audit trail, to name a few, are used in DVNX in standalone mode. When you turn on the power, the DVNX welcome screen will tell you the model, firmware, and serial number of the viscometer, and you'll be present a login screen. When you log in, you have to choose who are the user that you're going to go under. In this manner, I'm going in. Uh, I'm going with the administrator, and you need to put in a password, and you log in. And then you tell you to remove a spindle and you hit next and you do auto zeroing uh, automatically which is necessary once it is done you hit next and then when you go to the tool icon click on that uh, it tells you the device user setting global setting and admin function this is the user settings um, you can see sound display or change your password uh, if you're an administrator, if you're using this, you can change your password from here. Or if you go back uh, to uh, admin function, this is where most of the functions are, you have a log in and log out. Uh, this function will allow you um, to say, like, disable account after how many times of log in and log out. A password policy, all right, whether you require capital letter or no, or use with the password expiration. Um, it also allows you the log out options, means, which means that after how many uh, minutes or so, um, you can say time out and it will go into so called sleep mode. Uh, under the electronic signature, uh, whereby you can set that, whereby the user will be either submit and approve or submit review and approve or not at all. The other function user and access. Here we can give you level of under uh, power user levels uh, where you can do everything or a user level access. All right, the general meet, uh, setting. These are the things that you can access uh, to the viscometer with QC alarm and stuff like that uh, to give him or not to give him access for this particular or external mode. You can edit user. So, for example, a Cameron or DGF, or you can edit the user whether you what kind of access whether you're going to be under user or power user so which means that uh, determine what are the level of user um, um, are given to uh, to that person and also you can add user which is normal for example if I add my name um, Eric and then I'll just use a password call Eric now I did not uh, set the password uh, so call the intensity so I can use anything and hit next as you can see, Eric is a user or power user. So I say he's a power user and he said next. All right. So it takes a while. So which means that in terms of assigning role, if I submit a reviewer or approver. So let's say he's a reviewer and my full name is called Eric C. That is my signature and say, OK, so I'm good. So as you can see right now, if you go back here, add user, edit users, and delete the user, for example, you can also do that. For example, I like to delete this person here. Delete, delete DFGH, yes. So it'd be deleted. Now it's only three users. All right. And then of course, default user setting. You can do a default, um, things like that. So these are some of the basic uh, function that, um, uh, that under 21 CFR compliant that uh, are found in uh, the DVNX in standalone mode. Um, also like managing settings uh, after the user and access, you can do manager setting. Uh, you have set time and date default and, um, and calibration reminder. Um, 
device reset. Uh, the other thing also that of interest is manage uh, data. Managing data is very important. How do you manage it? Like backup, you can say how often do I need a backup? The frequency is it weekly or going to be monthly? So you can select, all right. Or um, or also when you do a backup, uh, you can. Uh, for example, when you do a backup export result, you can give them a path, um, uh, or you can archive. All right, like audit trail. Where do you want to archive your audit trail? How long you want to archive them? All right, for twelve months or for a couple or just for two three months. So it all depends. So you have the flexibility as a user to determine how you want to archive your audit trail. Update software. You can also do an update software uh, through so-called uh, firmware. On the device setup again, uh, you can also have an audit trail. For an on the audit trail here, you may ask, yeah, uh, how do I know what are the information is saved? Yeah, on the audit trail on the device setup, you just click audit trail, and you see this is some of the thing. As you can see, Eric has been added. So I just add my name, Eric, on as a user. Um, at the today, uh, August the seventh, at um, at about six thirty, six twenty seven p.m. All right. I also delete DFGH. If the user was deleted um, soon after, so the audit trail uh, will display what has been done at least to the previous camera. So it goes back all the way back. So depend what you want to see. All right. You can also stay in the archive, or you can save the audit trail. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is a very short video of the um, of the navigation to the uh, 21 CFR and what function it is available. There are more than that, but what I just shown you are just the basic and most common function that is available in the 21 CFR compliance. Thank you.